Hi everybody, it's Mr Pickering here from Head of Cavell House, here for World Book Day 2021. I'm going to read a small portion of one of my favourite books, The Sports Gene, Inside the Science of Extraordinary Athletic Performance by David Epstein. Now this is a non-fiction, normally I'm a big fiction reader, but uh, all of that's packaged up as I've been moving house recently. If you want to vote or give any feedback on my reading, you can find so in the description, there'll be a link that you can access just there. But anyway, here we go. In the early 1940s, Dutch chess master and psychologist Adrian de Groot began drilling for the core of chess expertise. De Groot would test chess players of various skill levels and attempt to dissect what made a grandmaster better than an average professional and the average professional far superior to a club player. The common wisdom of the time was that highly skilled chess players thought further ahead in the game than did less skilled players. This is true when skilled players are compared with complete novices. But when de Groot asked both grandmasters and merely strong players to narrate their decision making in the face of an unfamiliar game situation, he found that players of disparate skill levels mulled over the same number of pieces and proposed essentially the same array of possible moves. Why then, he wondered, did the grandmasters end up making better moves? De Groot assembled a panel of four chess players as representatives of their varying skill echelons, a grandmaster and world champion, a master, a city champion, and an average club player. De Groot enlisted another master to come up with different chess arrangements taken from obscure games, and then did something very similar to what Starks would do with athletes 30 years later. He flashed the chess boards in front of the players for a matter of seconds, and then asked them to reconstruct the scenario on a blank board. What emerged were differences between the skill levels, particularly the two masters and the two non-masters. So large and unambiguous that they hardly need further support, De Groot wrote. In four of the trials, the Grand Masters recreated an entire board after doing it for three seconds. The Master was able to accomplish the same feat twice. Neither of the lesser players was able to reproduce any boards with complete accuracy. Overall, the Grand Master and Master accurately replaced more than 90% of the pieces in the trials, while the City Champion managed around 70% and the Club Player only about 50%. In five seconds, the Grandmaster understood more of the game situation than the club player did in 15 minutes. In these tests, the group wrote, it is evident that experience is the foundation of the superior achievements of the Masters. But it would be three decades before confirmation would come that what de Groot saw was indeed an acquired skill and not the product of innately miraculous memory. In a seminal study published in 1973, Carnegie Mellon University psychologist William G. Chase and Herbert A. Simon, a future Nobel Prize winner, repeated the degree experiment and added a twist. They tested the player's recall for chessboards that contained random arrangements of pieces that could never occur in a game. When the players were given five seconds to study the random assortments and then asked to recreate them, the recall advantages of the masters disappeared. Suddenly, their memories were just like those of average players. Now it's a great book, I would strongly recommend it to anyone who's interested, but as I said before, if you want to give any feedback, it is in the link below.